In previous videos, we learned where the code required an outlet and how to lay out receptacle outlets in a residential unit, hotel room, apartment, dormitory, and other similar areas. There are many types of outlets available in the market with added features like USB charging ports, a combination of switch devices, being technologically advanced with a smart outlet, and more. These features serve a special purpose and convenience. The question is, are they required by the code? Good day, fellow practitioners, engineers, electricians, and future engineers. Welcome to my channel. Not all electrical outlets on premises are the same because there are many different types of electrical outlets depending on their applications. Our topic is about receptacle outlet types and applications as required by code. Article 4.6 covers the rating, type, and installation of receptacles, cord connectors, and attachment plugs, cord caps. Under this article, in section 4.6.1.3, a. Receptacles. Receptacles shall be listed and marked with the manufacturer's name or identification and voltage and ampere ratings. The rating of receptacle outlets shall be rated not less than 15 amperes, 125 volts, or 15 amperes, 250 volts. All equipment must be listed and marked to ensure safety and quickly identify the type or purpose of the equipment. What are the rules of the codes for the receptacle outlets installed in wet and damp locations? In section 4.6.1.9a, receptacle installed outdoors in a location protected from the weather or in other damp locations shall have an enclosure for the receptacle that is weatherproof when the receptacle is covered. When attachment plug is inserted, the outlet will not be weatherproof. A receptacle shall be considered to be in a location protected from the weather where located under roofed open porches, canopies, marquees, and the like, and will not be subjected to a beating rain or water runoff. All 15 and 20 ampere, 125 and 250 volt non-locking receptacles shall be a listed weather-resistant type. Receptacle outlets installed in a wet location shall have an enclosure that is weatherproof whether or not the attachment plug cap is inserted. An outlet box hood installed for this purpose shall be listed and identified as extra duty. Other listed products, enclosures, or assemblies providing weatherproof protection that do not utilize an outlet box hood need not be marked extra duty. Exception. Receptacles installed in a wet location and subject to routine high-pressure spray washing shall be permitted to have an enclosure that is weatherproof when the attachment plug is removed. Non-locking receptacles shall be a listed weather-resistant type. In paragraph C of the same section, an outlet cannot be installed within or directly over a bathtub or shower stall. What are the types of outlets required for the safety of people? One of these is tamper-resistant receptacle outlets. Compared with standard outlets, these outlets are safe and effective that prevent electrical contact with foreign objects, thus, preventing electric shock and even death. These built-in shutters prevent children from inserting foreign objects in the receptacle slots. Where does the code require this tamper-resistance outlet? In 4.6.1.12 tamper-resistant receptacles. All 15 and 20 ampere, 125 and 250 volt non-locking type receptacles in the areas specified in 4.6.1.12, 1, through, 7, shall be listed as tamper-resistant receptacles. 1. Dwelling units in all areas specified in 2.10.3.3 and 5.50.2.4, section 2.10.3.3 is for all areas in dwelling units, such as bedrooms, dining, kitchen, library, bathroom, hallway, balcony, foyer, and similar areas. While section 5.50.2.4 is for grounding type, GFCI outlets, and outlets required by code. 2. Guest rooms and guest suites of hotels and motels. 3. Childcare facilities. 4. Preschools and elementary education facilities. 5. Business offices, corridors, waiting rooms and the like in clinics, medical and dental offices and outpatient facilities. 6. Subset of assembly occupancies described in 5.18.1.2 to include places of waiting for transportation, gymnasiums, skating rinks, and auditoriums. 7. Dormitories. This section mainly provides protection to prevent children from inserting foreign objects in the receptacle slots. When is a tamper-resistant outlet not required in the code? Receptacles in the following locations shall not be required to be tamper-resistant. 1. Receptacles located more than 1,700 mm above the floor. 
2. Receptacles that are part of a luminaire or appliance. 3. A single receptacle or a duplex receptacle for two appliances located within the dedicated space for each appliance that, in normal use, is not easily moved from one place to another and that is cord and plug connected. These are behind dishwashers, refrigerators, washing machines, and the like. 4. Non-grounding receptacles used for replacements. Another type of outlet that protects a person is a ground fault circuit interrupters outlet, GFCI. Compared with the tamper resistance outlets, the GFCI outlet monitors electrical input, and when a ground fault occurs, GFCI quickly shuts off the power in a fraction of a second. How GFCI works? Shown is the typical circuitry and components of GFCI. During normal condition or no ground fault in the circuit, the current in conductor L is equal to the current in conductor N and these conductors are passed through the sensor. This sensor monitors the current in the conductors L and N. Further, this sensor also connected to shunt trip. In case of a ground fault, there will be a current in the grounding conductor that results of unbalanced current. The sensor will detect and send a signal to the shunt trip to shut off the power. By shutting off the power, GFCIs can significantly reduce the chances of electrocution. Ground faults can be caused by Equipment in wet or damp areas. Faulty or leaking tools and appliances. Using damaged cords or wiring. Hence, where are GFCI outlets required to install according to the code? In section 2.10.1.8 in ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel shall be provided as required in 2.10.1.8a through e. The ground fault circuit interrupter shall be installed and integrated with the receptacle. For branch circuits requiring GFCI outlets but a non-GFCI outlet being installed, it is permitted to use a GFCI circuit breaker instead of GFCI outlets. For distance determination, for example, GFCI outlets are required if within 1800 mm from the edge of the sink. When determining distance from receptacles to the sink, the distance shall be measured as the shortest path, the cord of an appliance connected to the receptacle would follow without piercing a floor, wall, ceiling, or fixed barrier or passing through a door, doorway, or window. For dwelling units, GFCI outlets are required in the following locations. 1. Bathroom. All receptacle outlets in the bathroom must have GFCI protection, including receptacles integral to luminaires. 2. Garages and accessory buildings. There are no exceptions. All receptacles outlets installed in the garage must provide GFCI. This is protection for the user of appliances or other equipment, regardless of where the receptacle is located in the garage. These requirements is also for the accessory buildings. All outdoor receptacle outlets must be GFCI, except for outlets that are not readily accessible which are not complied with the required outlets of 2.10.3.3, for example, in the foyer and balcony, if more than 2 meters from the floor level, these outlets are not required to be GFCI. In addition, if supplied by a branch circuit dedicated to pipeline and vessel heating equipment, outlets are not required to be GFCI. 4. All outlets in crawl spaces must be GFCI. 5. All outlets in unfinished portions of basement areas not intended as habitable rooms must be GFCI. Permanently installed outlets for fire alarms or burglar alarm systems shall not require ground fault circuit interrupter protection. Outlets installed in kitchen countertop surfaces are required to be GFCI. Where receptacle outlets are installed within 1800 mm from the inside edge of the sink, the outlet must be GFCI. All outlets at boathouses shall be GFCI. Outlets with 1800 mm of the outside edge of the bathtubs or shower stalls must be GFCI. All outlets in the laundry must be GFCI. How about non-dwelling units such as commercial and industrial establishments? What are the rules of the code? Section 2.10.1.8 b states that GFCI requirements for non-dwelling units cover all outlets of 15 and 20 amperes. These include single-phase 50 amperes or less and three-phase receptacles with a voltage of 250 to ground or less or 100 amperes or less. Number 1. All outlets in the bathroom must be GFCI. 2. Kitchen. Compared with dwelling units, only countertop surfaces is required to be GFCI, while for non-dwelling units, all outlets in the kitchen must be GFCI. 
All receptacle outlets on the rooftop shall be GFCI, same with outdoor receptacle outlets. All outlets that are within 1,800 mm from the inside edge of the sink must be GFCI, except for outlets in industrial laboratories used to supply equipment where removal of power would introduce a greater hazard, and also for the patient bed locations of general care or critical care spaces of healthcare facilities. GFCI is not required. However, if it is in the bathroom, outlets must be GFCI. GFCI outlets are required in all location where water or other liquid can drip, splash, or flow on. Outlets in locker rooms with associated showering facilities must be GFCI. Garages and also accessory buildings. All receptacles outlets installed must provide GFCI. Same with crawl spaces and unfinished basements not intended as habitable rooms, outlets must be GFCI. In conclusion, these outlets are available in the market. Some outlets have special features designed for particular purposes, and some are for convenience. Whatever the purpose of these outlets, all materials must be listed and marked to ensure the safety of everyone in property. Thank you all for watching. Do you have any topics you want to discuss? Please, type in the comment box, and if you like this video, please subscribe, like, or share. See you in the following video.